In golfing history, one name stands tall, Raymond Floyd. Raymond Floyd, and this is my U.S. Open. His story is a testament to talent, unwavering determination, and an indomitable spirit that has indelibly engraved his name in the hearts and minds of golf enthusiasts. On August 8, 1982, Raymond Floyd achieved a feat that left even the most seasoned pros in utter amazement. He not only clinched the PGA Championship, but did so with a swagger that would define his legacy. Floyd didn't merely win, he dominated, leaving no room for doubt about his golfing prowess. The exclamation point on his triumph was a resounding three-shot victory over Lanny Watkins, another stalwart in the golfing world. But that wasn't all. Oh no, that would be too ordinary for a man of his caliber. Floyd shattered the record books with an astonishing opening round of 63, displaying pure golfing wizardry. 63! It was an exhibition of perfection on the greens, a moment of golfing magic that sent shockwaves throughout the world of golf. That round was nothing short of a dream, the embodiment of a golfer reaching the absolute zenith of his powers. And it all started with an array of records that only a few can match. Born on September 4, 1942, in the heart of Fort Bragg, North Carolina, Floyd was raised under the watchful gaze of his father, L.B. Floyd, a man whose life was intertwined with the U.S. Army and the world of golf. L.B. Floyd, a golf pro at Fort Bragg's enlisted men's course, also owned a nearby driving range where young Raymond and his talented sister Marlene, a future LPGA Tour pro, honed their golfing skills. From an early age, Floyd showcased an incredible ability to swing equally well from both sides, a rare feat that set him apart from the crowd. He leveraged this remarkable skill to not only refine his game, but also to boost his allowance. Soldiers on the course and civilians in nearby towns alike soon found themselves emptying their pockets as they dared to challenge the young prodigy. In 1960, Floyd graduated from Fayetteville High School, now known as Terry Sanford High School. He excelled not only in golf, but also in baseball. He received an offer to pitch for the Cleveland Indians organization. However, he opted for a different path that led him to the hallowed halls of the University of North Carolina in Chapel Hill. But his stay there was brief, lasting just a semester. It was evident that Floyd's destiny lay on the greens, not the baseball diamond. The early 1960s witnessed the rise of an extraordinary talent. In 1961, Floyd boldly entered the professional golf circuit, commencing a journey that would leave an indelible mark on the sport. By 1963, at the tender age of 20, Floyd secured his inaugural PGA Tour triumph at the St. Petersburg Open Invitational in Florida, claiming a handsome prize of $3,500. This victory marked only the outset of what would transpire into a legendary career, distinguished by a remarkable 22 triumphs on the PGA Tour, a tally that included not one, not two, but an impressive four major championships. Six years after turning pro, Floyd captured his first major title at the 1969 PGA Championship, an accomplishment that foreshadowed greater triumphs. His second major victory came in 1976 at the Masters, a commanding win that left his competition trailing in his wake, eight strokes adrift, as he led from wire to wire. But the piece de resistance was yet to come. In the sweltering heat of 1982, Floyd unleashed a hurricane of golfing brilliance. His opening round of 63 at the PGA Championship set the golfing world ablaze and the record for the lowest round in a major championship remained untouched until 2017. Floyd ended that year perched at the second spot in Mark McCormick's world golf rankings, second only to Tom Watson, who had claimed two major championships that season. A different ranking system was in place. If not, Floyd would have reigned as the world's number one. Regardless, Floyd said, after his opening round 63 with no qualifications, he can confidently say it's the best round of golf he has ever played. And the timing couldn't have been better, achieving it in a major championship on a challenging course like Southern Hills. Floyd's most cherished major victory occurred in 1986 at the U.S. Open held at Shinnecock Hills. After three rounds, he found himself in a tie for fifth place, trailing Greg Norman, who had led in all four majors that year by three strokes. In a dramatic turn of events, on the final day, Norman stumbled along with a 75, 
while Floyd delivered a brilliant 66 to secure the U.S. Open title. At the age of 43 years and 9 months, Floyd became the oldest U.S. Open champion, a record he held for a while. And then there was the one that got away, the Open Championship. In 1978, Floyd tied for second place at St. Andrews, narrowly missing out on that elusive victory that would have completed the coveted career Grand Slam. His closest competitor, the great Jack Nicklaus. Floyd's relentless pursuit of golfing glory brought him tantalizingly close to a second coveted green jacket at the 1990 Masters. Floyd was in a heart-wrenching playoff against the formidable Nick Faldo. On the second playoff hole, fate dealt a cruel hand. A fateful 7-iron shot found the icy depths of the pond left of the 11th green, and Floyd's hopes sank with it. During interviews after the round, Floyd said, When you're 47, it might be the last time a major championship comes within reach. In the aftermath of that devastating moment, he uttered words that revealed the depth of his anguish, saying, This is the most devastating thing that's ever happened to me in my career. I've had a lot of losses, but nothing like this. It was a painful twist in a career filled with triumphs, a scar that lingered in his memory. But Floyd was not one to be defined by setbacks. In 1992, he showcased his remarkable skills again, finishing as the runner-up at the Masters, a mere two strokes behind the victor, Fred Couples. The green jacket may have eluded him again, but his resilience and class on the course were unmistakable. And then, in a story that defied age, Floyd scripted a remarkable chapter in his golfing legacy. At 49, he emerged victorious at the Doral Ryder Open in 1992. This made him one of the oldest players to claim a PGA Tour event and solidified his place in golfing history. Raymond Floyd joined the illustrious ranks of Sam Snead as the second player ever to achieve the extraordinary feat of winning PGA Tour events in four different decades. But Floyd's story goes far beyond that. His golfing tale didn't conclude on the PGA Tour. In the same season, he carried his magic to the senior PGA Tour, now known as the PGA Tour Champions, becoming the first player to conquer both tours within a year. Floyd's golfing legend defied the march of time, even as he entered his 50s. By 1992, he astonishingly held the 14th rank on the official World Golf Ranking, a remarkable accomplishment for a player in his fifth decade of life. His journey on the senior tour was a symphony of victories, amassing 14 wins between 1992 and 2000, which included four senior majors and two senior tour championships. The flame of competitiveness within him burned as brightly as ever, and the golfing world marveled at his exceptional longevity and unwavering excellence. Beyond the borders of the United States, Floyd was a global golfing force, accumulating at least 24 additional tournament victories around the world, bringing his total tally of wins to an astonishing 60 events. He wasn't merely a golfer, but a magician around the greens, with a chipping game that left experts in awe. His precision and finesse were unparalleled, making him the undisputed master of holding shots from just off the green. One of his most iconic moments occurred at the Doral Eastern Open in 1980, when his birdie chip on the second hole of a sudden-death playoff outshone the legendary Jack Nicklaus. Floyd acknowledged that he understood how badly Jack Nicklaus desired the victory, but he too needed it just as desperately. When asked about his continued dedication to the game, Floyd's response was simple and profound. Why do I enjoy golf after 31 years? Going out there and doing things that are necessary to be competitive? Having practice, having to work, having to dedicate yourself? I guess it comes down to the competition. My personality? I'm not going to play if I'm not competitive. Floyd's list of accolades is as long as the fairways he conquered. He earned the Varden Trophy for the lowest scoring average on the PGA Tour in 1983, showcasing his consistency and skill. His presence in eight Ryder Cup teams between 1969 and 1993 only further solidified his status as a golfing icon. In 1989, Raymond Floyd was inducted into the World Golf Hall of Fame, a well-deserved honor for a man who had given so much to the sport. He even stepped into the captain's shoes leading the U.S. Ryder Cup team in 1989. His introduction of the American side as the 12 greatest players in the world ruffled a few feathers, but it was totally worth it. If you enjoyed this video about Raymond Floyd's rise to legend status, check out the video on the screen now or the one we posted below because we're sure you'll like that one too.
Let us know in the comments if there's another golfer whose journey you'd like us to cover. See you there!